Gwyn Fox, editor of Four Bars Rest magazine, and welcome to the Heritage High School in Clown for the 2016 Balls Over Festival of Brass and the start of what hopefully will be 13 hours or more of live broadcasting of Brass Band Entertainment to the world in partnership with the First Art Organisation. As I said, we have 47 bands taking part here today in six sections, and each will be given a 20 minute entertainment programme. As you can see, I'm actually joined here with the resident experts of the Brass Band World, but Chris Thomas of Brass Band World magazine, who free does so much freelance work throughout the banding world. And of course, we've got Kenny Crookston, the editor of British Bandsman, and they're going to be joining me throughout the day. We're also going to be having guests and Brass Band personalities join us here on the sofa. So hopefully there'll be plenty of chat, plenty of opinion, plenty of debate that's going to be going on. Most important, however, is that we want you to be involved in what's going on today. And for that part of it, we've got uh, a social media guru who is joining us here. And um, we've got to welcome Rachel Carter from the First Arts Organization. And Rachel, tell us a little bit what's going to be happening today and how we're going to get people involved, because that's what we actually need. It's not just about the people who are going to be here today at the contest itself, but people hopefully all over the world. Yeah, well, every time somebody logs on, we, we get to see where in the world they're watching and how many people's watching with them. But if they want to support their bands a little bit further, then they can send us messages and we'll pick out the best ones and read them out on air. Mm -hmm. So to get involved, just go on our uh, Twitter page or when you're tweeting, just use Fest of Brass. So that's the hashtag, yeah. Fest of Brass, that people get in. And as you say, we, we want messages, good luck messages. We yeah. want opinions from people yes. as well, as okay. long as they're all nice about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> about us three on, on, on the sofas, yeah. But also about the performances, also saying where you're actually coming from, where you're listening to the, yeah. to the competition and everything going on there. Also, in addition to that, there's some fringe events which have been organised by the First Art, First Art Organisation. Tell us a little bit about those because it's really innovative way of getting mm -hmm. more people in the local district to get involved. Yeah, we wanted local people to get a little bit more involved with the local brass bands. So we've laid on a couple of different locations. So in Derbyshire we've got the Sherland Miners Welfare and they support uh, a couple of local bands mm -hmm. and uh, some young, young brothers are in the National Orchestra. Uh, then we've also got the Diamond Centre in Kirkby and Ashfield. I believe they're open now, serving breakfast as we <laughs> it's speak. It's nine o'clock, isn't it? Yeah. Nine o'clock, <laughs> breakfast is served. So if you're there, well, no, well done yeah. for that one. So the Diamond Centre is going to be serving food throughout the day, lots of different ways to get involved. And then also a lovely hello to um, all the residents at Stonelow Court in Dromfield. Uh, they're watching on their big screen in their residential home. So hi to all of them as well. <laughs> so tell us a little bit, of, what's the reasoning behind this? F f tell us, First Art as an organisation does so much stuff in North East Derbyshire, Nottinghamshire, and all these areas around yeah. here. So what's, why are you supporting an event like the Balls Over Festival of Brass? How important is it? Well, it's really important because uh, we're supported by Arts Council and uh, what we're looking at is areas of the country where less than 20% of the people take part in any art form. So it could be live music, it could be going to the theatre, go see dance or uh, traditional art, going to a gallery. So we we cover North East Derbyshire, Bolsover, Mansfield and Ashfield, um, bringing lots of different projects to the people to try and get them engaged with arts. So just, we just want people to enjoy it. And tell us a little bit as well, there's a hashtag called hashtag 70 things, which yes. is through the Arts Council, and it's That's an important right. thing because it, it, it relates to banding and music and, and everything. Well, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, our Arts Council have uh, created this list of 70 ways to get involved with the arts this year. Uh, so there's a great big list, uh, and so quite a few of them relate to live music. So if you look out on our tweets throughout the day, we'll be hashtagging a few of the Arts Council's uh, 70 things. Well, thanks very much for, for starting us off there. As I said to people as well, all you have to do is get in contact by using hashtag Fest of Brass. And you can do that on Twitter. And as we say, the best of the ones that come through, as long as they're always for family viewing, we will be, we'll be talking about them throughout the day and, and as we go along. Meanwhile, back on the set, we are joined by Kenny Crookston and Chris Thomas, the two experts. We're going to be talking about everything that goes along throughout the day. Not necessarily about performances, but in general about what's been going on. And first of all, Chris, is, we, we were here last year and there was a great response yeah. to the, this which was put on. You know, how important it is that events such as these are actually broadcast, brass banding, broadcast throughout the world? Well, it's hugely important, isn't it? I mean, we, contests have been broadcast before, but I, I think 
Carol Crompton, who uh, organises this festival, has created something that's quite unique. I mean, the, you know, we saw last year, um, it's, the festival has grown year by year. I mean, we did a whole day's broadcasting last year, and it, it was it was a great day. This year promises to be even better. And I mean, you're looking at it, it's quarter to nine, you can see people wandering in and out. There's a lot of activity here already. Um, so it's it's very important that people, not only in the UK, but people all over the, all over the world are looking in. I mean, last year, I think we had people watching in uh, Africa, if I remember well, rightly. Somebody sent themselves at a peach in Jakarta. That's that right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, 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 that was Lawrence Eccleston, we, yeah. know, we know who that was. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. bet he was really enjoying it. <laughs> you know, yeah. So that's great stuff there. Kenny, you've got experience of broadcasting. You were involved with the, U the uh, World of Brass when they did the European Brass Band Championships. These take a lot of organising. I know you can see we talk about other things from around the world, but if you are going to do it, as you say, properly, it's a big investment. So Baltimore District Council, First Arts, etc., and the support from the Arts Council, it's a big project. It's crucial. Uh, the support for these things is absolutely crucial. We did the European Championships when it was in Linz in 2010, and we did it again in Perth in 2014, and we did a brass and concert the, the first year as well. We did it. Uh, from the sage and the, the financial risk actually is huge mm. when you're doing something like that. You, if you're doing it as a, as a commercial venture, as we did, um, you know, you, somebody has to pay the bill for it. I mean, you just can't expect somebody to pick up the tab for everything. But I think in this case, we're lucky, very, very lucky here to have Balls Over Council who have, have clearly seen the value in investing in such a thing. Um, but it is, it's an, it's an enormous task and all this stuff, I mean, people, people at home can't see is the massive um, array of cameras and, and equipment behind the scenes there. It doesn't come free of charge. This is an expensive operation, buying the bandwidth and everything like that, providing this service for people all over the world. It's, it's really crucial that somebody backs it. So, you know, to Bob's over council, I'm sure everybody would like to kind of be thankful for that. I think there's a huge example here as well, isn't it? I mean, they've really paved the way for this. I yeah. mean, they, as you say, the investment is is significant. Um, but, you know, you would hope that there were other councils around the country that would take note of what they've achieved because, I mean, they have put their faith in the arts to do this and that's, a, you know, that's a, a great initiative to take. So but Again, it takes somebody probably within the organisation like Carol who, to understand who, who that, is the real yeah, kind of yeah. torch bearer yeah. for brass bands and within that organisation and she has managed to, you know, persuade the, the people with the, the budget mm. that this is a very important thing. And in this part of the world, there's a great tradition of brass bands in this part of Derbyshire, it's, 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 it goes back a very long way. So it's great to see um, the backing still there. It was interesting last year, I think, that the chief executive had just come into post. Yeah. It was on the Friday. Yeah. His first job was to come here on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He walked in, he saw, you know, 2,000 smiling faces and everybody saying, what a fantastic council that you've run. Yeah. He must have thought it's the easiest job <laughs> <in> the <world. laughs> I, guess, I don't think I don't think it's got as easy as that since, since then. But hopefully they're coming back. But it is. It's something like that which shows that, you know, if a council is invested in, cause the, yeah. the, a lot of the yeah. bands represent communities and it's not just in this area. We've got bands from up in the northeast, we've got bands in the south Midlands, whatever. Yeah. We've got bands yeah. from all sorts of places coming here today. So that's, that's great stuff there. Just to tell you a little bit about what's going to be happening now uh, for the rest of the day, the live broadcast of the performances from the band starts at 9 o'clock and that's going to be taking place with the first section bands and there are 10 of those taken to the stage. Uh, so each of those performances you have a live broadcast, you'll be able to see that there and each of the bands you'll be able to see exactly what's going to be they're going to be playing. So you'll have no problems at all identifying the music that is going on. Around about 2.30 then you've got the first of the 13 championship section bands and they're also going to be uh, on a live broadcast. So that's what you're going to be getting band after band throughout the day. The bands in the second, the third, the fourth and, and registered sections, their performances are also going to be recorded and they're then going to be broadcast through the First Art Organisation website at a slightly later date. So every band will be getting the type of coverage that they deserve and there'll be something there for every band then to have a recording of and they can look back on with their performances good, bad or indifferent, prize win on or not in the future. So we've got plenty to look forward to from there. Um, as you said, the action is going to be starting now in just a few minutes' time. Looking at the programmes is a great variety of music, Chris, and they're oh, one of the ones we're, really, we're not going to actually listen to it live, but one of the ones we are looking forward to must be 
Iron Maiden, Run to the Hill. Absolutely. Who would have thought brass bands would be taking on heavy followed, metal music? F- followed by the acrobats. No, oh, 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 this is that one. <laughs> How about that? Iron Maiden to the acrobats. <laughs> that's what we. There's the diversity of brass band music. But, but that's something that Kenny as well. We talk. You've you know gone to uh, entertainment contests. Bands are always talking about balance programs. Well, if you can balance Iron Maiden with, <laughs> <laughs> with the acrobats, <laughs> you do you do it. But it's great. It, that's great, isn't it? Not in the theory that there's something there for everybody. Else. <laughs> Acrobats <laughs> and Iron Maiden fans, they're all queuing up as they're going into the, into but the place. But there's a, there's a serious point here, isn't there, in that you know, we, we're talking about this, this being broadcast. There's a lot of people out there that don't see brass bands every day, they just don't know the kind of music that brass bands are capable of playing of. So to actually see bands playing music like that and see the diversity of the repertoire on offer today, that's, that's a great thing, it really is. Well, there's plenty of music, that we, as we say, we're going into the first section. The first band that's going to be uh, broadcast today is Island Corrie Chesterfield Band under their musical director Richard Windle. They'll be starting off with Barnum and Bailey's Favourite by Carl King. That's a piece of music that was written back in 1913. And then that's going to be followed by Rhapsody for Euphonium by James Kerno. The soloist there is Dave Buckley. And then we're going back again in time for some entertainment, which is Hogarth's Hoedown by W. Hogarth Lear, which of course was the same name for Elga Howarth, followed by All the Pretty Little Horses by...